Hey everybody, this is Eroica. Thanks so much for stopping by for another video. I've had a couple of my subscribers ask for this, and so I finally went ahead and did it. This is going to be an in-depth review of Igarok, the legendary tank and dungeon boss. Sit back, relax. I hope you find this information informative, and let's see if this legendary tank is going to find a home in your hero arsenal. <music> So my Igarok is level 70 and he's fully ascended. Once you do that yourself, you're going to find this guy geared up with some really cool battle armor. And of course, he's got that biker goatee thing going on. He's so bad looking, you almost don't even really want to mess with him. If you click on the question mark for his tokens, you'll notice that he's only available in the Heroic Summon portal. And additionally, you may find some dungeons that are specific to an event. Otherwise, you won't see him in any of the campaign dungeons. So when these events do come around, make sure you take advantage of him as soon as possible. If we click over to the stats tab, I'll scroll down here for some of the numerical statistics. If there's anything of interest to you, please feel free to pause the video. One thing I'd like to point out is that at level 70, he does have a 25% crit chance, and that'll come back to something we'll talk about later when we get into the traits section. So of course, as a water unit, he has the standard 30% versus fire unit advantage and the negative 25% versus nature units. His first trait is going to be Freeze Immune, which means he cannot be frozen. Definitely beneficial in a lot of cases. If we look at his next trait, this is going to be Polar Master, which is a chance to freeze on any crit. This goes back to this 25% crit chance, and uh, this can be definitely beneficial, especially in some PvP circumstances or even in some campaign dungeons where you may need a little bit of a break from getting beaten on. His next trait is called Armor, which will take less damage from physical attacks. And his last trait is called Shattering Team, which will boost water and ally damage versus frozen targets. So I'm not a very big fan of putting together all one kind or, or uh, cookie cutter type teams. And so in this case, any other water heroes that were with him would benefit from any freezing effects that either they caused themselves or uh, that was a result of Polar Pound, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. When we look at his abilities tab, of course, we have his basic attack for swing. His next attack is going to be Polar Pound, which is probably the one you're most familiar with. This is the one that typically uh, causes quite a bit of damage, and not only because it's the first attack available, but because it is uh, pretty devastating in PvP and can cause quite a bit of problems. At level 70, this is a ranged cold attack on all enemies that does 2,263 base damage with a chance to freeze. And this goes back to if you're looking, need a stall tactic or trying to create some kind of a break uh, from any incoming damage, this is a really good attack to do that. It does have a an energy cost of eight turns in order to be able to use it again so it is one of those attacks that it's kind of rare to get it off more than once in a pvp setting and in a dungeon you may may depending on the length of it uh, be able to do it at least two times but typically uh, once is about all you're going to see uh, depending on the circumstances his next attack is going to be Arctic Rush, which is a melee cold attack for 1,810 base damage and then a 1.5 damage multiplier if the enemy happens to be chilled or frozen. So this doesn't necessarily have to come from Igarok himself. If you have an all-water team put together uh, and that other heroes within your team were able to create that effect on an enemy, then Igarok would be able to take advantage of that and create quite a bit of damage. Um, additionally, it is possible to uh, use Polar Pound on enemies and then have it cycle around and be able to use arctic rush as well but in all honesty if you really want it usually wears off before you have a chance to do arctic rush so typically you're going to see it in conjunction with some of your other water heroes that carry that same ability and then lastly of course we have his reflecting taunt which is really nice and i'm not sure if you were able to see my video on the best tank in the game which of course was published before the introduction of Leonidas although I don't think it would affect the results uh, the reflecting taunt at level 70 provides a 70% re damage reflection back at the enemies and so this is really the highest damage reflection of any of the characters that carry such an ability within the game the only drawback here and it's really not even that big of a drawback is that as far as his taunt concerns it's required six turns in order for him to be able to use it again where the other tanks in the game only have their taunt uh, have to cycle through five turns. As far as Igarok's ascension goes, his first ascension will require 47 water evos, 16 water evo monarchs, 5 light evos, and 2 subterranean evos. With this, you'll be able to get Arctic Rush for his second ability. His second ascension will require 46 light evos, 32 water evo monarchs, 8 cold fire evos, and 2 infinity evos. And this will give you his fourth ability, the reflecting taunt. 
overall, Igarak is a really amazing hero to have, and I recommend that any opportunities that come up to you to get his tokens, I would certainly take advantage of them. If you see my other video on the best tank in Dungeon Boss, which was posted before the issuance of Leonidas, although I really don't think it matters, Igarak came out as the number one tank in the entire Dungeon Boss game. That being said, the only shortcoming that he have is really the level of difficulty in obtaining any of his tokens so that you can unlock him. Igarok has a place in quite a few applications in the game. When we talk about PvP, he is perfect for stall tactics, and because of his high HP level, he really can take quite a few hits. Even with his weakness against nature units, he can still take a, a little bit of a beating. It's not 100% immune, and obviously he's going to definitely take some damage, but in cases where he is going up against one or maybe two uh, nature heroes within a PvP team, there's still some applicability there, and I would not be afraid to bring him in. When it comes to some of the more complicated dungeons, especially in those in the challenge mode, I think that you're going to find there's quite a bit of application for him. When we're looking at a, a level difference in, in between you and what the recommended level is on a dungeon, he can provide a good service of being able to freeze those enemies and stall them up, which might be just the edge that you need to be able to gain the advantage, especially if the damage being dealt uh, towards you is greater than you're giving back to the enemies. As far as being a tank is concerned, Igarok carries all the tools of the trade, but what's really cool about his taunt is the ability to do a damage reflection of 69% uh, and possibly going to 70% once I reach level 70. Uh, and that's quite a bit of damage to go back to an attacker, and something that can really make or break some PvP fights and uh, may help you with any particular uh, boss fight within a campaign dungeon. Now, while I am absolutely not really that big of a fan when we talk about putting together teams such as All Beast or All Water, All Fire, um, I have to admit, he comes with quite a bit of complementary features that would make putting him in a group uh, such as Therind or some of the other water heroes who have the ability um, to freeze, or well, especially in Therind's case rather, where his attacks ignore all armor. Uh, using Igarok and putting together a water team which really complements each other with their traits, I have to admit that's actually a really powerful group and probably one of the better uh, all elemental teams that I've seen uh, would they really have some traits which intertwine with each other really well and work really well. The only I would say downfall is if we look at um, Ice Bloom and her healing ability uh, to freeze she comes with two things. Unfortunately, many of the water heroes aren't able to be frozen, and that, of course, includes Zagarok, so he can't benefit from any of her heals. And while Yasmin is a is an okay healer, she's not my favorite by any means, uh, she is certainly someone who can uh, manage some of the damage, at least a little bit, as long as your level's high enough and you're not taking too much damage. But the nice thing is, is that um, even though it's not going to have the damage reflection, you could still keep damage going towards Igarok with Ice Bloom's misdirect, and so, of course, he's still as a tank designed to take that damage and as long as your healer was able to keep up he could be used for that uh, and still uh, so in between the energy cost rotation for his taunt you could alternate those back and forth and keep Igarok taking in all the damage. As I said earlier, if there's any downside to Igarok, it's going to be the challenge that it is to unlock him for yourself and then get him fully starred up to six stars. The ascension requirements are par for the course, so that's something that you'll, you would have to work on for pretty much any hero. Uh, but I would say trying to get hold of these tokens is definitely going to be a little bit challenging, but also definitely worth it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. If you have any thoughts on this guy or if you recently unlocked him, let us know in the comments. I try to respond to everybody that takes the time to do so. Please feel free to check out some of my other videos. You'll find other character reviews and some of the uh, challenge mode dungeon bosses, which I've already unlocked and beaten. So you can see a couple of strategies there uh, that might help you out for the upcoming future. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I will see you at the next video.